word of God over my body. Neno la Mungu kwenye mwili wangu. This has to do again with the body. Hii lazima ianze na mwili. But I speak to my brain. Lakini nazungumzia akili zangu. I say brain live with good memory. Nasema akili ishi na akili nzuri. I speak to my eyes. Nazungumzia macho yangu. I speak to every part of my body. Nazungumza kila kiungo cha mwili wangu. And I say by the stripes of Jesus. Nasema kwa mapigo ya Kristo. I take this Passover bread. Nachukua huu mkate wa Pasaka. And I remember my diseases have already been paid for. I receive it, Lord Jesus. When I take the juice, I remember my sins are forgiven. And I remember that often. I confess often. Jesus, you are my Lord. Jesus, keep me from any strangeness. Jesus correct me if I'm wrong. You see I have a verse of scripture. In 2 Thessalonians 2:15. It says therefore brethren stand fast and hold the tradition which you have been taught whether by word or by the epistles. I'm so thankful for Paul. Paul has given us so many rules that we can understand and how we are to live. So the first thing is my belief system must be right. I'm not going to let anybody steal that from me. I have to stand firm. For the thing about healing was almost stolen from me. I went to visit a preacher that I admired. And he was a Baptist pastor. And he said, you know, all this stuff you're believing is not true. You were a missionary. missionary. And you needed, emo- you needed that. But that's not for everybody. And all of a sudden, about an hour later, I began to feel sick. And no matter how much I prayed, I felt sick. And that night, I began to doubt. Have I been believing wrong? Did Jesus really take away my weaknesses? This pastor knows a lot. Who is right? The next day I was still sick. And then the Holy Spirit grabbed me. And he said, who are you going to believe? And I sat up in bed. And I said, this will not be stolen from me. I know that by the stripes of Jesus I know that I'm healed I know that you paid the price for me and I'm going to keep believing it no matter how I feel and instantly I was healed and I say guard that word now the second thing you must daily have feelings and refreshing of the Holy Spirit. Notice I said daily. Pastors and leaders don't depend on what happened 10 years ago. Uh, sorry? Don't, don't depend on 10 years ago. What's God saying to you today? What are you doing today? You see, I learned when I was in Africa that there was power in praying in the Spirit. I had never been taught that before. But, but Holy Spirit began to teach me. So we made the journey from Fort Portal to Nairobi. 
kwenda kuja Nairobi many times mara mingi and i would be praying in the spirit nilikuwa naomba katika roho i was praying for you nilikuwa naomba hours and hours masaa hours and hours i was praying for africa masaa tulikuwa naomba africa hours and hours as we drove around uganda tukizunguka uganda i was praying for africa kwa masaa nilikuwa naomba africa i kept on praying in the holy spirit kaendelea kuomba katika roho mtakatifu i didn't know that in the book of jude it said i was building myself up siku jua kitabu cha yuda inasema nilikuwa najijenga and i'm telling you the things that i've learned this kept me strong na kuambia mambo nimejifunza yamenitia nguvu i want you to catch it nataka uchukue pia i'm thankful that i'm 80 years old this year i'm thankful na shukuru niko na miaka 80 mwaka huu and i give god all the glory napatia mungu tukufu wote i give god all the glory that i can travel that distance napatia mungu tukufu wote kwamba anaweza tegemea hiyo hiyo umbali wote it's not easy to travel from america to nairobi sio rahisi kusafiri kutoka amerikani kuja nairobi you have to be strong lazima uwe na nguvu there's a lot of walking you have to do kuna kazi mingi lazima ufanye but you know i remember lakini nakumbuka i was in my 50s nilikuwa katika miaka yangu ya 50 and i was in israel nilikuwa kule israeli and there came a woman in our midst kukaja mwanamke kule she was 80 years old alikuwa miaka 80 and she was carrying her suitcase alikuwa anabeba sanduku yake and she said akasema i just want to go wherever god takes me mimi nataka niende pale mungu atanipeleka she had traveled from america alikuwa amesafiri toka amerikani to taiwan kwenda taiwan to israel kwenda israeli and you know what i said na unajua nilisema nini lord bwana when i become 80 i want to travel i want to be strong nikifika miaka 80 nataka nisafiri niwe na nguvu that was 30 years ago hiyo ni miaka 80 iliyopita i began to believe for it nikaanza kuamini kwa hiyo it's been a few years since i've been to nairobi ni miaka michache kutoka wakati nilitukua hapa nairobi but i went with my other son who's a pastor lakini nilikuja na rafiki yangu mwingine ambaye ni mchungaji and his church from oklahoma na kanisa lake kule hapo oklahoma does ministry in malawi huwa wanafanya so my last three trips have been to Malawi. Kwa hivyo kusafiri kwangu leo mwisho nilikuwa Malawi. And I want you to know my last trip. Nataka mjue kwamba safari yangu 2 years ago. Miaka miwili iliyopita. From the time I went to bed kutoka wakati nilikuwa huo to another bed kutoka kwa kitanda kimoja hadi kitanda kingine was 50 something hours ilikuwa na masaa 56 the trip was all over the place nilikuwa tunasafiri kila pahali and when i got home na nilipofika kwa nyumba i said praise god nikasema bwana asifiwe how many older people can do that watu wangapi wazee wanaweza fanya hivyo you got to be strong lazima ukuwe na nguvu you got to have a strong spirit lazima ukuwe na roho ya nguvu and when you spirit strong roho yako ikiwa na nguvu you don't feel all the aches and pains au sikio maumivu yote yote you say do you have pains once in a while ndio mara moja moja utakuwa na uchungu but i've learned to ignore them lakini nimejifunza kupuuza now i go to a doctor if i have to naenda kwa daktari kama lazima niende but i praise god lakini wanasifu mungu that for the last 20 years my blood work has been great kwa miaka 20 damu yangu imekuwa ikipiga vizuri and you see i always said na mimi nilisema wakati wote when i get to the old age nikifika hii miaka i don't want to take a handful of pills sitaki kuwa nabeba madawa mengi My mother used to have a handful of pills. Mama yangu alikuwa anabeba madawa mengi. And today, na leo, I take a mild blood pressure pill is all. Uh, one pill. Ninachukua tu pressure pill moja tu peke yake. And that's God giving me what I believe. Na hiyo ni Mungu amenipatia kile niliamini. Now, the daily feelings. Ah, uh, ile kujazwa ya kila siku. In Acts 10:38. Ah, uh, matendo 10:38. I love this verse describing Na, Jesus. Napenda huu mstari unaoeleza kuhusu Yesu. It talks about how Jesus went about. Inasema vile Mungu alienda, Yesu alienda. He was anointed. Alikuwa ametiwa mafuta. You are anointed. Wewe umetiwa mafuta. I am anointed. Mimi nimetiwa mafuta. And you know I like to get up and say. Huwa napenda kuamka niseme. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Roho wa Bwana yuko juu yangu. For he has called me. Maana amenita. He has appointed me. Ameni apachenga. And I go in his strength. Na ninaenda katika nguvu yake. It said that Jesus went about doing good. Inasema Yesu alienda akifanya mambo mazuri. And he was healing all that were pressed. Ah, Jesus was strong. But what can we learn from Jesus? He spent time in prayer. He spent time to know the Father's will. He's our example. 
We must have that daily feeling. We must ask God to fill us. Through praying in the spirit. We must ask God to fill us just through praise and worship. I love to worship God. I love to give him thanks. Now there have been many times where I've complained. And it didn't accomplish anything. So let me tell you, if you want to grow up in the Lord, you got to quit complaining. And when I do complain now, I feel the Holy Spirit, and I'll say, Oh, thank you, Lord, for this day. And do you know, I know you thank God for this day. But do you know God has given you this day? You didn't have to worry about making it. You didn't have to worry about anything. God gave you a day. And God gave you strength. And God gave you grace. Because he loves us. And so we can say this is the day that the Lord has made and I will rejoice in it. You see that heart of gratitude when we're full. It keeps us strong. So just praise the Lord and thank him for this day. Thank you Lord for this day. The third thing if you want a strong spirit is you must feed your spirit lazima ulishe roho yako and you must take care of your spirit na lazima uijali ama ushughulikie roho yako now let's look at 2 Corinthians 7:1 wa korintho wa wa pili saba mstari wa kwanza in this verse katika huu mstari 2 Corinthians 7:1 wa korintho wa pili saba moja it says having therefore these promises dearly beloved let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Inasema wapenzi kwa uh, kwa kuwa tunazo ahadi hizi basi na tujitakase nafsi zetu kutokana na kila kitu kitiacho mwili na roho unajisi. Now, how do you clean yourself from the filthiness of flesh? You can't do it. But you can agree with God that you need cleaning. You see, sin will keep you from having a strong spirit. Carelessness will keep you from having a strong spirit. So you check yourself. God, where do I need to clean myself? So many young pastors are being discovered in lust. They did not take time to go before the Lord and to cleanse themselves. When I first married my husband, we, we were in training. And the speaker said, you will be tempted with lust. You will be tempted with money. And you will be tempted with pride. And he was speaking to pastors. And I can tell you those three things happen. And many, many times people fall because they don't know how to cleanse themselves. You agree it's sin. You repent. God does the cleaning. Because it's impossible for us to do it on our own. Remember the second verse we read today? It's, it said God who is faithful. He will do it. Just say to someone, God will do it. God will do it. God will do it. Now, praise the Lord, he can do it. But I just ask him to do it. Now, another verse is 1 Peter 2:2. 2, 2. 
it says as newborn babes Inazama kama watoto wachanga desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby Tamani ma- maziwa yasiyogoshishwa ya neno ili muweze kukua kutokana na hiyo You say we're to go from faith to faith. Tunafaa tukue kutoka kwa imani hadi nyingine. We're to go from glory to glory. Tunafaa tukue kutoka kwa utukufu hadi mwingine. And we're to go from strength to strength. Na tunafaa tukue kutoka kwa nguvu hadi zingine. And all of that is based on scripture. Na hiyo yote msingi yake ni neno. So we go from faith to faith. Tunataka kutoka kwa imani hadi imani. So that means I've got to know the word. Hiyo inamaanisha lazima nijue neno. For the word is what helps me develop faith. Maana neno ndio inayofanya msingi wa imani. I've got a hungry for the word of god because i want a strong spirit and i can't just be hungry to preach i've got a hunger for my own self i've got to be fed for my own self many times pastors forget to feed themselves they're feeding other people And when I forget to do that, I'm always reminded. You need to hear the voice of God. You see, so when I'm cleansing my spirit, uh, with God's grace, I love the verse that's in Titus 2, Napenda mstari ambao uko katika Tito 2:11-12. That's already been mentioned this morning. And there have been other things that I've said that was already mentioned. It, it says for the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men. And in verse 12 teaching us ikitufundisha the word of god is teaching us neno la mungu linatufunza the word of god is feeding us neno la mungu linatulisha the promises of god are feeding us ahadi za mungu zinatulisha you have delicious food in kenya mko na chakula kizuri hapa kenya and i always desire your samosas huwa ninapenda sasa hizo chakula and i have already eaten a lot of them nimekula mingi ya hizo but i should desire the word of god lakini lazima more than I want a samosa. Now, I want to read a translation. This is from the passion, you can call it a paraphrase. Okay, It says God's marvelous grace has manifested in person bringing salvation for everyone. Inasema hivi kwamba Neema ya Mungu ya kiajabu imedhihirisha katika mtu ikileta wokovu kwa kila mmoja. This same grace teaches us how to live each day. Neema hii hii inatufundisha ni namna gani tuishi kila siku. As we turn our backs on ungodliness and indulgent lifestyles. Tunapogeukia ama tunapokaa mbali na kutokumcha Mungu na and it equips us na inatupatia uh, vifaa to live self control vya kutufanya tuishi maisha yaliyojitawala upright ah uh, ya utakatifu and godly lives in this present age. Maisha ya kiungu katika Maisha haya. Oh how we need to feed our spirit. Uh, Do you want a strong spirit? Iliona, you know, think of some people in the Bible that you know that has a strong spirit. What about Joshua and Caleb? Labda Yoshua na Caleb. You know, they were strong at 85. Walikuwa na nguvu wakiwa na miaka 35. Caleb said, eh, Caleb said, give me this mountain. Caleb alisema, nipatie huo mlima. Now I don't know whether I could go up a mountain or not. Sijui kama mimi ndio aende kwa But I claim that promise. Lakini nadai hiyo ahadi. You know Mary was a strong person. Um alikuwa mtu mwenye nguvu. Have you thought about the shame that she must have borne when she carried Jesus? Kama angeangalia ile aibu yenye angekuwa nayo wakati alikuwa na baba Yesu. But she was strong. Lakini alikuwa na nguvu. Daniel was strong. Danieli alikuwa na nguvu. David was strong. Daudi alikuwa na nguvu. Now 
The rest of this time I want to show you something real simple. I've got a lot of verses and maybe I can get some of them. I began to think how can I tell someone to have a strong spirit? I want us to think about our body. First of all, it begins with the mind. In Mark 12, 30, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all their heart, with all their soul, with all their mind, with all their strength. This is the first commandment. Utampenda bwana mungu wako na moyo wako wote na nafsi yako yote na akili yako yote na nia yako yote na nguvu zako zote maana hii ni amri ya kwanza uh, ya mungu So I check my mind Iko hivyo naangalia mind do nia you, yangu Do you love the Lord with everything within it Wewe unapenda mungu na kila kitu kilicho ndani Romans 12:2 Warumi 12:2 this verse tells us be not conformed to this world but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So my mind has to change if I'm going to have a strong spirit. In 2 Corinthians 10, five and six, it says, "Casting down imaginations." And every high thing that, it, that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. Bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. So your mind is being renewed in the word. And now with the authority that Jesus has given you, you take charge of your mind. You can control what you think. A thought may come, but you can reject it. So thinking has to become like Jesus. You must begin to get a victory mindset. You're coming through. No matter what you're facing. You're coming through. Because what you experience on earth is temporary. No matter how you feel. You're coming through. Train your mind. You are more than a conqueror. Train your mind to think like Jesus. When there's a contrary thought, pull it down. Say with your mouth, I will not think of that. One time, a long time ago, I was walking down the sidewalk and I heard a voice say, just jump and come in front of that car and die. Now I knew where that came from. I wasn't going to tolerate that thought. So I said, in the name of Jesus, you will never tempt me with that again. I love life. I refuse to accept it. You know, the devil left. And he never tested me again on that. Because I pulled it down quickly. Why do some young ministers commit suicide? I know some have in America. Because something in their mind, I'm not talking about sickness. I'm talking about something in their mind was not focused on the right thing. Now I'm going to skip some of the verses because I have so many. Until we're going to go with the mouth. Uh, see your mind now your mouth in 1 Peter 3.10 
a petro wa kwanza uh, tatu kumi. It says, Inasama? for he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips that they speak no God. Inasama hivi, mana ye anayependa uzima na anatafuta siku nzuri, wache yeye ajitenge ulimi wake na uovu na kinywa chake kutokana na kuzungumza mabaya. I'm sure you have heard many teachings about your tongue. But how are you speaking? In Psalm 34 verse 1, it says, I will bless the Lord. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. What is coming out of your mouth? What are you saying about people? What are you speaking to your family? What are you speaking to yourself? I might have missed it sometimes. But when I had my children, and even today, I bless them. I have blessed my Greg. I have blessed my Barry. And I, and I have blessed my daughter Kim. I bless their minds. I bless them every day. I pray for them every day. I've been doing it ever since they were born. As I said, both sons are ministers. And my daughter works with special ed kids. She is an administrator over special ed. In a Christian school. And I'm so thankful that she learned how to bless children. I'm so thankful that she doesn't say, you're stupid. I'm so thankful I never said, you're ugly. I said, you're blessed. The call of God is upon your life. I spoke scriptures over them. I touched them at night. And I said, you're increasing in wisdom. And in, and in stature. And that's really Luke 2, 52. Wisdom, statue, and in favor with God in man. Okay, wisdom, stature. And we'll do we'll do one more in Proverbs 1821. But now you can look up a lot of scriptures because I have a lot. Just look up what God says about your mind. What he says about your mouth. What he says about your ears. What he says about your eyes. What he says about your heart. Now, Proverbs 18:21 says, "Death and life are in the power of the tongue." How many of you already knew that verse? How many of you already knew that verse? All of you? No, a lot of people. Did you know with your tongue? Did you know Did you know with your tongue? You can kill or you can bless. If I choose to bless, it opens the door for God to bless me. You see, when I said that you'll be tested with lust, money, and you know what I've learned to have a strong spirit? When I start worrying about money, or when I think about saving money, maybe, you know, just because I want to, I start giving away something that keeps my spirit man strong. 
mtu wangu wa, wa roho anakuwa na nguvu I've given away a lot of stuff when I didn't have it to give Nimepeana vitu vingi ambavyo hata si, wakati siko na kitu kupeana But I'm here to tell you Lakini nilijua kwamba God has always brought it back Mungu atairudisha I could give you 100 200 1000 testimonies Naweza kutolea elfu moja ushuhuda elfu moja But one of them I'll tell you recently Lakini mmoja ambaye alitendeka hivi karibuni When I was the head of our school When you I started the Christian school. Nilianza shule ya Kikristo. And I had some students. Nilikuwa na wanafunzi. A boy and a girl. Kijana na msichana. That they didn't have any money. Ambao hawakuwa na pesa. I helped with their tuition. Ilibidi nilipe tuition yao. And I actually bought their meal card. Mimi nikawanunulia hiyo kadi ya chakula yao. Now that was more than 30 years ago. Hiyo ilikuwa zaidi ya miaka 30 iliyopita. Well just 2 years ago Karibu miaka miwili iliyopita I never thought about it again Siku fikiria vile ilianza But this little boy Lakini yuko kijana grew up Alikuwa to be a multimillionaire Akakuwa milionea mkubwa zaidi And you know what happened Na unajua nini litendeka I'd never had a gift this big Sijawahi kupata kitu kitu nimepewa kubwa kama hii But he gave me $50,000 Alinipatia hiyo $50,000 yeye huyo alinipatia Praise God Bwana asifiwe And he said Na alisema It's because you helped me when I was a little boy Ni kwa sababu ulinisaidia nilipokuwa kijana mdogo He continues to be a blessing to us Anaendelea kuwa baraka kwetu God always rewards you. Mungu wakati wote atakupatia thawabu. I have given away all my groceries one time. Sangine nimepeana chakula changu chote. And I went to a church on Sunday. Nilienda kwa kanisa Jumapili. And what did they have? Na ile walikuwa na nini? A whole room full of groceries for me. And yeah, wao walikuwa nao walikuwa wamenunulia na mimi chakula. They didn't know I had just given away all of mine. Hawakujua kwamba nilikuwa nimepeana yote. One time we heard a missionary speak. Wakati mmoja missionary alikuja kuzungumza. And I had $200 in my pocket. Nilikuwa na dola 200 kwenye mfuko wangu. My husband had $200 in his pocket. Mume wangu pia alikuwa na hiyo dola 200. And we didn't talk to each other. Na tukazungumziana. But we both felt led to give our money. Sote tukasikia kuongozwa tutoe pesa zetu. Now we had nothing. Hatukua na zote. At that time we had nothing because we were, we were in between the missions and the pastor. Wakati huo hatukua na kitu maana tulikuwa katikati ya kuwa missionary na kuwa mchungaji. So we were supposed to go out to eat after that lunch after that church. Tulikuwa tunahitaji kutoka baada ya kanisa. And I looked at Jerry. And I Jerry, said, How much money do you have? He said, I gave it away. I said, I gave mine away too. So I would not tell you to do this. But God spoke to us and said, You go out to eat anyway. And we did it because God spoke to us. Do not do that unless God speaks to you. And just before they gave us the bill, someone walked over and said, we're paying your bill. I'm glad I've never had to do that again. But you know, there was one time I was in the grocery store. Kuna wakati moja nilikuwa nimeenda kama kwa supermarket TV. There was a single woman. Kulikuwa na mwanamke mmoja. And when I was going up and down the aisles, na sorry, you are? The Lord spoke to me. Mungu akanizungumzia and said, "Pay for her groceries." Mungu akaniambia, "Mlipie hiyo vitu yake ambaye ananunua." Now I'm talking to God. Nazungumza na Mungu. And I said, "God, nikasema Mungu, I will if you have her to check out when I check out." Ah, uh, nitafanya vile if you do what? Sorry. When I went to check out, nilipoenda kuangalia, I looked back, nikaangalia, and she was behind me. Na alikuwa nyumba yangu. And now I'm standing there. Sasa nasimama pale. And I'm waiting to see what her bill is. Na nangoja kuona yeye ni pesa ngapi? Hizi vitu zake ni za pesa ngapi? And I remember it was $60. Nakumbuka hiyo vitu zake ilikuwa dola 60. And I said God spoke to me. Nikasema Mungu ameniambia to buy your groceries. Nikununulie hizi vitu. I never heard anything. Weeks later, Majuma baadae, I get this in the mail. Pastor Carol, Carol, I had no money na pesa, and I was going to write a bad check. Na nilikuwa naenda kuandika check. And you listened to God. Na wewe kwa Mungu. She told it where she worked. 
aliambia watu vile alikuwa anafanya kazi and they were all touched na wote wakaguzwa because none of them had ever heard of a miracle like that maana hakuna mtu alikuwa amewahi kusikia muujiza kama huo i tell you that will make your spirit strong I could go on and on. I could tell you over and over again. You get strong when you're generous. When, when you are obeying God. When you're doing what he tells you to do. Your life begins to change. You know, when we started in college with my son. We didn't have a bank account. But our bank account was in heaven. And all of my children went through college without borrowing money. Bila kuomba, awalipitia shule bila mimi kuomba pesa. And I give God all the praise and all the glory. My second son has his doctorate degree. Mwana wangu wa pili akona degree ya doctorate. God has blessed him. Mungu amembariki. Greg went on to get masters and my daughter masters. Greg, Greg anaenda kupata masters na pia binti yangu anaenda kupata masters. Because I started speaking at an early age. Maana nilianza kuzungumza katika miaka michache. My children will have money to go to college. Watoto wangu watakuwa na pesa ya kwenda kwenye viwo. Now I sort of got off my sermon. Ah, niliweza kufanya hiyo kwenye mahubiri. But maybe you needed to hear miracles. Labda mlistahili kusikia hiyo miujiza. So let's think about for a moment now our eyes. Nilisema nizungumze kidogo kuhusu macho yetu sasa. We may not can get to all the body parts. Huenda tusiingilie viungo vyote vya mwili. But Hebrews 12:2. Lakini Waebrania 12:2. It says looking unto Jesus. Inasema kumtazamia Yesu. The author and finisher of our faith. Mwanzilishi na yule ambaye anamaliza imani yetu. Looking unto Jesus. Kumtazamia Yesu. He's the author. Yeye ndio mwanzo. And the finisher. Na yeye anayemaliza. Are your eyes focused on him? Eh, macho yetu yakiwa juu yake. In Psalm 121 verse 1 and 2. Zaburi The psalmist says. Mwandishi wa Zaburi anasema, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills. Nitainua macho yangu nitazame milimani. From whence cometh my help? Msaada wangu watoka wapi? Verse 2. Um, sorry, what pili? My help. Msada wangu. Say my help. Cometh from the Lord. Cometh from the Lord. You say it. Cometh say from the Lord. Cometh from the Lord. Which made heaven and earth. Which made heaven and earth. So my eyes needs to be focused on the Lord. Kwa hivyo macho yangu yanafaa ya mlenge bwana. And Psalm 101:3 tells Z- it best. Zaburi 101 na 1 mstari wa 3 inasimamia hivi. In this verse it says I will set no wicked thing before my eyes. Ah uh, inasema sita weka I will sita weka macho yangu kwa chochote kibaya. I make a choice. Nimefanya uamuzi. What do you watch? Unaangalia nini? Many men get hooked on pornography. Ah, uh, wanaume wengi huwa wanaangalia hizo picha mbaya. You must break that spirit. Lazima uache hiyo. Put your eyes on Jesus. Weka macho yako kwa Yesu. Do not let it be a wicked thing. Usiweke macho kwa kitu kibaya. I've had to turn off my television set sometimes. Sasa zingine nimezima television yangu. Because I felt it was wrong. Maana nilihisi hiyo ni makosa. We guard it, remember? We guard Lazima our tu, spirit. Tulinde. Unakumbuka tuzema tulinde we, nafsi zetu. We clean our spirit. Tuweze kulinda nafsi zetu. Now let's remember again where we're going. Roho yetu our basic beliefs are in the Lord Jesus Christ. And we feed with daily feelings and, and we cleanse and take care. Now let's look at hands. I know my time's about gone, but I just want to tell you, it's exciting to me to think about the cross. What about your hands? In Psalm 63, 4. In Psalm 63, 4. He says, thus will I bless thee. While I, while I live. 
nikiwa hai I will lift up my hands in thy name Nitainua mikono yangu katika jina lako You know our hands are for blessing Mikono yetu ni ya kubariki And I want to encourage you Nataka nikuimize Use your hands for blessing Tumia mikono yako kubariki Now there are many verses I could use Kuna misari mingi naweza kutumia But we're going to look at the heart Lakini tuangalie moyo Colossians 3:2 Wakolosai 3:2 Set your affections on things above Weka hisia zako kwenye mambo yaliyo juu not on things on the earth. Sio mambo yaliyoko hapa duniani. Proverbs 3, 5 and 6. Tatu, tanu, na adi sita. These are my favorite scriptures. Ayani sana. Trust in the Lord with all their heart. Na moyo wako wote. Lean not unto your own understanding. Kwako in all thy ways zako zote. acknowledge him yeye. and he shall direct thy path. Yako. That word just comes alive in my spirit. We guard our hearts. I won't have time to go through all of them because there's so many. We look at our feet. We could take every part, but look at our feet. It says in Psalm 1833, he, he maketh my feet like hinds feet he sets me above my high places do you know what that says to me that my feet are on the solid rock I am am standing on the rock of my salvation nothing can shake me and even as we come to an end I want to believe with you today that you're going to have a strong spirit we're going to talk about our emotions tomorrow but a strong spirit sound emotions and a healthy body and it says that's what Jesus is looking for when we come to full maturity we will be strong in the Lord. So in the name of Jesus, just stand a moment. In the name of Jesus, I bless you. I declare over you. This word will not return void. This word will go in the hearts of every one of you. This word will produce. This word will produce. And it will produce a harvest. And every minister here every person here will be stirred and be challenged to go for a strong spirit to be the fullness of Christ to develop in that full maturity because we are trusting in you Lord God to do it I leave a blessing fire Lord before this week ends may every person be refreshed in their spirit may everyone be healed do more Lord 